Hello, and uh, I'm not in the workshop today. Um, I've uh, it was mid-April in the UK, and we've had a spell of exceptionally nice weather, and so um, I've come to Brighton to the seaside. Anyway, so I thought we would uh, think a little bit about a project that I've done recently, which is a rolling shop cabinet, and I'll show you how I've modelled the plans for that in SketchUp. So um, I've got my laptop and we'll get straight into it. So the general dimensions of the project um, uh, dictated by the uh, components um, within the project itself. Uh, so I'm using the IKEA Linmon tabletop, which is 120 by 60 centimetres. Now the overall depth that I wanted was 50 centimetres front and back to fit the um, uh, to fit the workshop and here uh, we can see that uh, I can trim off uh, at the 462 millimeter mark um, and then effectively have this little upstand at the back of the bench top and uh, the other dimensions that are critical are the uh, panel uh, side panel dimensions um, they are 64 centimeters by 50 centimeters uh, with obviously a strip cut off of the end of each of these kitchen reclaimed doors so uh, let's uh, get modeling that in sketchup okay so there we go here's our man uh, dave i think his name is so let's uh, get rid of him and um, we can get started with some some basic shapes now as i say i want the cabinet to be 500 millimeters deep by 1200 millimeters so we'll draw the base first. Um, now you can do this by eye. Alternatively, you just type in the measurements. And you can see in the bottom right corner, 500 by 1200 by 500. And there we go. So let's uh, scroll into that. Now this is going to represent the bottom and um, so this is going to be the bottom. I'm using 18 millimeter MDF. So with the push pull tool, I select the face and pull it up, and type in 18 millimeters, and that gives me the base. Okay. So with the space bar, I can get back to the pointy pointer. And as I want um, all of these components to be separate as part of the model, um, and not to interact with each other when I draw the remaining po components, like the sides, for example. Um, uh, I, I'm going to make this a component. So right click, make component, bottom, we'll call that. OK. So now let's flip the model over. Um, and I want to put in um, some strengthening pieces on the underside. Um, now these feature in the model, so they're going to be 1200 millimeters by 100 millimeters. Okay, and I'll do the second one at the back. Um, the reason to do this was to really strengthen the bottom and uh, to have somewhere for the casters to um, uh, lock into. And again, uh, with the push-pull tool, select the face, draw that out, and that's going to be 18 millimeters as well. And the same with this one, 18 millimeters. Okay, so there we have the bottom. Um, I'm going to select both these components. And make that a component as well. We'll just call it bracing for now. It means that those pieces are independent of the bottom and independent of any other component that I stick in later. So let's come back to the top. Now this is a relatively simple um, model and we can make very quick progress with this. So again, it's 500 millimeters wide by 80 millimeters. So, so these are the th thickness of the uh, doors that I'm cutting down. 
Um, so again, with the push-pull tool, I can bring that up, and I need to bring that up to 640 millimeters. So there we go. So there's our side. Um, now again, uh, this is a, a little shortcut. I don't need to draw that at the other end. Um, I can just make copies of it. So first I'll make this a component. And we'll just call that upright. Okay, and um, with it selected and the option key down, I can use the move tool, the option key down, and then create another one. I'll snap that to the end. Okay, I'll just do it roughly. And uh, with the option key down again, I can make a second copy and bring that to the middle. Okay, so there we have the basic um, carcass design. Now let's just get in and um, move these components to their correct locations. So if I select that component, oh, that's a, just come back out, select that component, uh, move, select the corner, and I can slap it to the corner there. Um, now if I move to this component, uh, I can select it, move, take the midpoint of that component, and then somewhere. And then uh, I've just snapped it to the midpoint of the bottom. So there we go. So this middle component needs to be recessed back as there will be a stretcher that runs um, along the top here. Um, so the way to do that is I'll select that component. Because remember, these are copies. Uh, so if I make a change to one component, the co all components will change. So I need to make this component unique. Select the comp component. Select that face. The push-pull tool. Move that back. 18 millimeters. Okay, so there we go. That's just set back slightly. Okay, and that's pretty much uh, how that looks. Uh, let's go to the top here. Now, across the back of the model, uh, the carcass is a strengthening piece, um, and that is 100 millimeters by 18 millimeters. Okay. So with the push-pull tool, we select uh, that component, draw it out, rotate the view, and reference the face on the other side of the cabinet, and click OK. And there we go. So we select the component, and I'll select for a new element and we'll make that component as well. Cross brace. Now, when I make uh, models um, in SketchUp, um, I don't make them, generally speaking, perfect. What I'm looking to do really is to um, uh, use this as a build guide rather than necessarily a detailed set of plans. But in a sense, what I'm trying to do is to um, uh, decide the dimensions of the pieces so that it forms the cut list and also to look at what um, operations that I, I need to, to place uh, in the piece. Now this is going to have a back in it and there will be a routed groove in the sides, bottom, and then there'll be a rebate in the top here. I'm using six millimeter um, uh, plywood in the actual um, build itself. Um, I'm not gonna reference the grooves 
in the side, certainly not for this demo. Um, and the, the, the principle here really is just to put the, um, uh, the, the rebate in here, and then from the rebate, then I'll uh, create the back panel. And as I say, it won't be as, as it will in real life, but essentially it will um, allow me to certainly model this component properly. So, so with that component um, uh, selected, then what I'm going to do is uh, select that face uh, and then select this edge. See there? And then with the move tool, okay, and the option key set down, I'm going to move that edge in six millimeters and then put that there. And then that gives me a new face which I can then use the push pull tool on and rebate up. So I tend to make my rebates 10 centimeters, sorry, 10 millimeters deep. And there we go. So now we have the rebate in the uh, top component um, uh, for the for the back. Now you can always hide components in SketchUp, which is a great way of getting into the detail. So we're going to put the back in. Like I say, I'm not going to model the grooves. I want this to be quite simple. So what I am going to do. is uh, very similar to when I put the rail in. So I can now select that shape, and use the push-pull tool, pull that out. Let's take the model. And reference the face of the opposing side. Get it out of the way. So there we go. There's the back in. Um, and let's get that center component back. So we'll uh, unhide all. There we go. So there we go. There's the basic carcass. So with nothing selected, we'll put the top. Like that. Push pull tool. Bring that up. Now the top is uh, 34 millimeters thick. So there we go. So that's basic carcass, but obviously um, we need to make our upstand at the back. Now the way I'm going to do this because uh, is to essentially model the. Uh, the upstand, um, which is uh, 1200 by 34. Uh, taking into account the thickness of the top is 34. I need to push pull this up 101 millimeters, like that. Um, and then so that we can properly reference this we'll just use the pencil tool to mark the stand like that. So there we go. There's the um, basic cabinet carcass. Uh, the only other thing that we might want to do is to um, complete the model, um, put some casters on. So uh, we can do that by pulling casters out of the 3D warehouse. Um, and uh, I know that I use 70 millimeter locking cut swivel casters, which are these ones. So that's uh, download these into the model. Let's put that there for the moment um, and go back to the top and make that component top. 
And there we go. That's basically it. Um, let's just do some colouring. Mm -hmm. uh, brown, uh, something. So there we go. Um, the completed model that took around about twenty minutes in real time to film. Um, I've edited this so that it, it's a bit snappier for you watching. Um, so I have two of these in the workshop at the moment and there will be more built very shortly as I'll be moving to a slightly bigger workshop. If you want a copy of this model then I'll include a link uh, in the description below to my website and you can download the SketchUp model uh, from there and play with it. So anyway, thank you for watching. Um, I'm going to be heading off for my weekend and uh, I hope your weekend is sunny and uh, relaxing too. So take care. Bye bye.